Hi, I'm Molly from CPCAB. Today I'm talking to Kate about the importance of endings in counselling training and particularly how that can be managed during the lockdown experience. Hi Kate. Hi Molly. Hi. Okay, I know uh, recently you've experienced an ending yourself as a student. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, of course. Um, my experience for this particular course was very different from previous experiences that I've had um, on counselling training. This uh, particular course wasn't counselling related, which I think explains some of the differences. Um, but it was very different in terms of how that ending was managed uh, the group we were given kind of we knew the end date of the course and the tutor said to us in the penultimate week you know this is you know the, the second from last session next week will be our final session together um, they spoke a bit about how it was very different how it wasn't the ending for the course that was intended because uh, that program like many others um, moved online after March the 23rd so we'd still been able to see each other each week and to be able to work together to have workshops on a big blue button, that kind of a thing. But of course, it's not the same as actually being together and seeing each other. Uh, when it came to that very last session, it was a brief kind of um, narrative from the tutor at the end to explain, of course, you know, it has now come to the end. Uh, you know, thanked everybody, said it was a nice group. Um, and then kind of said, you know, take care and locked off. Uh, and so then a lot of peers followed suit, as did I, logging off. And then afterwards I thought, oh gosh, you know, that was the end of the course. Um, but we didn't, you know, explore how we felt about endings. Uh, we didn't kind of explain how we were feeling about the course coming to an end what plans we had for the future. It was very much a take care and off you go. Um, and, it, and it left me with a lot of different feelings compared to specific counselling training courses that I've been on where, you know, we've prepared for the end weeks in advance or, in fact, perhaps we might prepare for the end from the beginning so that you're always thinking about the end. And it wasn't like that. And I know the programme wasn't supposed to be like that, but it, uh, my experience of it was very different. And I can imagine that um, a, a part of that is because of the lockdown as well. And that that must bring up all sorts of feelings for people that perhaps they wouldn't experience was the end of, if the end of their course was, you know, as it was planned to be in the classroom. Yeah, I can really hear the difficulties surrounding an ending like that and certainly um, not the sort of ending that a counselling and training course would ordinarily have. And yet I'm saying in cycle times with groups meeting remotely that it might be quite difficult for centres to be able to think about how they can adapt their ending in, in these difficult times. Counselling training uh, recognises, I guess, the importance of endings, doesn't it? As you say, often preparing really very much from the beginning of the training. In a way, it sort of mirrors the counselling relationship. Um, and it also gives students an opportunity to acknowledge their successes, their achievements, their progression, and also to recognise the loss and the experience of the loss that comes at the end of a course. And that's going to be really helpful for them if they become counsellors in the future. Um, I guess there's other contexts as well that I know we've spoken about that, that will also impact on students during lockdown. I know you've got something you can share about that. Yeah, I, th I think well, given the current situation that we're in, that it's always worth considering the kind of uncertainty for the students and that perhaps were it what we might call a normal ending in terms of the, the the course coming to an end it could be very different right now because there could be a lot of uncertainty around whether or not um they can progress to level three to level four will it be remote learning or will it be back in classroom so that it means that uh, the next step perhaps isn't quite as clear-cut 
perhaps as the students had anticipated and that could then that uncertainty could have a knock-on effect kind of on the ending of this course um, and the, the, there are different endings that the students might be experiencing simultaneously in terms of whether their face-to-face -face contact is going to change now that they are not going to be seeing their peers each week in the tutor um, whether or not they're going to have much adult conversation from now on. So there's lots of different endings that they might be experiencing that were we not working remotely, that perhaps they wouldn't have experienced. So there's lots of different kind of dynamics and things to consider on top of um, kind of what we might call like a normal course ending, if that makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. I guess, as you've said, just at the point at which we recognise the importance of an ending for counselling training, it's and at the time when the endings, the traditional endings, are more difficult to achieve, we need them more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you, Molly, on mm. that. So perhaps, perhaps we can just talk through and share a few different ideas that we have for some endings that um, centres might like to try out themselves, or they may have already... Uh, tried some of these but for others uh, give, we hope to give you some ideas about um, things that you might be able to to do in this remote world that we're inhabiting. Um, I think that we can perhaps start thinking about um, how we can mark the emotional and psychological meaning of an ending of a course as a particular and probably most dominant area for us to think about in counselling training. Um, for example, uh, I had an experience with a group um, not that long ago where we all shared um, a piece of music that represented our experience of the course. Um, and it was really, really moving, actually. Uh, students presented them, as I put it together, but students really thought carefully about uh, partly their experience, but also something very significant about their learning. And for that group, it was um, a, a diploma group who were in placements, and a lot of their learning had come from the, the work with the clients um, that they had in their placement. So particular client presenting issues that really resonated with them came into that. Um, and, and it was a very, a very um, creative way that didn't involve really any work as such for students to be able to acknowledge the felt experience that they'd had during the course. That sounds really lovely. And the idea that I'd had uh, certainly similar in, in some respects um, in that the, the students could choose either like a meme or a quote or a picture that um, kind of symbolises their experience of their training. Uh, and that was quite nice to see. Some might be a little bit more tongue in cheek, perhaps. Some might be, might include, say, for example, um, you know, a quote of Carl Rogers, but it could be anything that was personal to the students that really kind of resonated with them of their experience. It's, and as you said, it's such a nice idea because it doesn't mean that they've necessarily got to be looking through textbooks, um, but something that kind of really kind of strikes them is like, oh, yes, you know, but they take something from it and perhaps their peers might take something from it too, which is really lovely to see when it happens. Absolutely. And, and as we're discovering, there's all sorts of ways that those objects or pieces of music or memes or whatever it is can be shared. So they might use a video conferencing and hold something up or or they may um, share things through email or uh, put together a little presentation or something like that. So lots and lots of ways actually that they can share share those sort of creative things that represent their their meaning. Uh, I think it's also important really um, to acknowledge the academic meaning um, at the end of a course. So this really does apply to students at all levels, from levels two right through to the higher levels. There's a lot of academic learning and it's, it seems really important to acknowledge that. So sometimes I think that can get a little bit missed when we're thinking of how we feel at the end of a course, but what have we actually learned and what have we achieved? Um, again, I think um, it's quite useful to think of some sort of project or task for students to complete towards the end of a, a course. 
um, that, that sort of fits with reflection on the ending. What have they learned? Uh, I, again, I had some students, this was a, a, a diploma level student, but a uh, group of students, but they were, they were drawing out their learning from the, um, from the client work in their placements and actually putting their final presentations together around that. So that really marked, it was, it was partly a piece of work that was required for the course, but partly something that really brought together all their learning because in a sense, it's the clients that probably they're going to learn from most at that level. Um, so it's some sort of task or um, assignment um, or, or presentation that helps them show the group and the tutors what they've learned, I think can be a really useful way of bringing the course to a conclusion. Yeah, I think so. There's so much, as you say, that they've learned through the course and perhaps through sharing their own experience, it may even kind of, um, kind of bring back memories for other people that they might think oh yeah I, I've learned about that too and actually kind of refresh their memory on things that they've learned as well um, one of the things that uh, I've used in the past is the uh, three stars and a wish handout so that the students can make a note the stars represent something that they've learnt and then the wish is something that they would like to learn about uh, so it's a good opportunity for the students to document three key things that they will take away from the session. And of course, you could add to the, the template. I'm sure you can find them on a Word document online. So you could add more stars if you wished. Um, and then the wish at the end of what they would like to develop, you could use that then to embed into their CPD log. So actually perhaps they might then do some research of, okay, so how am I going to fulfill that wish and have a look and spend some time looking at if it's a course that they want to do, where could they do the course, how much might it cost? Um, and, and actually then think about what it is that they've learned so far to this point, but also what are they going to be doing going forward as well? That seems to work quite well with the students. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're sort of recognising there the uh, the role of the tutor in in facilitating learning, but also stretching students. And and actually, in this case, even beyond the end of the course, you know, what are you going to do when you finish it? We know that can be really helpful in in working with loss. You know, it's like, what does the world look like after this? How can I create something that's meaningful to me without this in it, but it takes me to the next place of my journey? Yeah. Um, we've talked about, you know, the emotional and psychological meaning of endings and the academic meaning of endings. Um, and of course, yeah, traditionally, a lot of students would have got together with their tutors and celebrated the ending as well, had a bit of fun. Uh, usually involved in cake and that sort of thing, maybe even down the pub for some people. So um, we're wondering, you know, how, how can we have a bit of fun in this? How can we, how can we sort of acknowledge the the joy and celebrate the ending as well? Um, one thing that's really fits fits well with uh, remote teaching and learning is um, asking students to. Um, those who can, if they've got the, the means to, to post a selfie, um, just using their phone, just saying a few words about the course and what they'll miss and what they won't miss. Um, they might be able to share that on any sort of um, medium, WhatsApp group or Facebook or um, anything like that, really. So that's quite a good, quick way for, for students who have access to those sort of devices to, um, to have their voice at the end. That sounds like such good fun, Molly, because the students, if they wanted to, could kind of bring some props into their selfie as well, almost like if it was a um, an at-home photo booth, if you like, so to be as great as they like with that selfie. But one of the things um, which I found to be good fun in the past, um, which could uh, hopefully translate well online, would be a virtual award ceremony so perhaps the tutors could send out the categories to the students, perhaps on email, so these are, you know, these are the categories and, um, you know, please nominate your winner. Perhaps if you wanted to, you could have, you know, a winner and a runner up. So perhaps people found it difficult to decide and they could have, you know, that winner and then a runner up 
then the categories, you know, it's open to your imagination and what you think might be appropriate for the group. So it might be something along the lines of um, best check-in contributor, if you do check-ins as part of your group, uh, it might be best dressed. You know, it's completely up to you to decide what categories that you would include. Um, you know, if you've got the resources and the time um, to kind of mock up certificates or perhaps you could nominate somebody within the group that would do that, um, but they could leave the name blank so that you could then type in their name for each of those people uh, and then the certificates are uh, awarded at the end of the ceremony and emailed to that person just to something a bit novel um, and a bit light-hearted for that last session. It's something I think you can facilitate online as well. Okay, that sounds like a really good um, en- way of ending um, a course to, to, to bring some fun, to acknowledge the contributions of everybody in the group. And I really love it as well about uh, getting students involved. Students love taking responsibility and ownership of activities and um, the more that they can contribute, the more meaningful it will be for everybody. Yeah. So we hope that all our tutors will be able to find some time to mark this extraordinary ending and we're going to put some more ideas and resources at the end of this video and we hope that they're useful for you so thank you again for all the work you're doing and we hope you're staying safe and well